Hello, this is Smoke and Joe Gamer on Twitch and YouTube, Mastodon, Discord. I'm starting a new series today called The Vinyl Guy. I have a small vinyl collection that I started about uh, 10 years ago. So each episode, I'm going to pick one of my vinyl records and just talk about it. I'm going to talk about the product itself and also the music. Uh, I can't play it for you because of copyright and all that. But in this first episode, I'm going to talk about the first vinyl record that I bought when I first started collecting. I bought this even before I had a turntable, and uh, it's one of my favorite albums ever. So this first episode, we're going to talk about Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd. This is a remaster that came out. Um, I think it, this is saying 2011. That that tracks, I would say I bought this uh, the end of 2012, thereabouts. So yeah, it is a remaster, and it comes in this uh, weird kind of black bag. So I'm just going to kind of peel this open for you. And I'll go ahead and just pull this out. So there you go. So there's the album. I'll put that over there. So yeah, so you have this really uh, cool cover art, and here's the back. So I actually had this on CD to start with, but... When I started collecting vinyls, I wanted this, and I believe this is 180 gram, yeah, it says right on here, 180 gram vinyl, it's a remaster and all that. So, it came with some interesting stuff, so you've got, um, it came with some postcards and a poster, those are not currently in here anymore, because I, I don't know, I put them somewhere. Um, so then, yeah, here, now we have this image here, and I got this image here, and this just tells you all about, the, yeah, all the lyrics are here, and it tells you some other bits and pieces of it, uh, who worked on what. The album originally came out in 1975. Pink Floyd is my favorite band, and I'd say this is probably their best album. Um, I would have told you that Dark Side of the Moon and The Wall were the best albums ever recorded when I was a teenager, or even in my 20s, but um, I think I've just heard them too much. They just get played on the radio. I've heard Run Like Hell so many times, I don't want to hear it anymore. Money was one of the first bass lines I learned, and I can't listen to that song anymore. It's overplayed. Um, there are a lot of Pink Floyd songs you hear on the radio a lot. They're a very popular band. So I'm just going to put that there. And then so then you get this nice little kind of pink plastic thing, and then here's the you know record itself is just standard black vinyl. So... Yeah. Recorded at Abbey Road Studios, January to July, 1975. Yep. And of course, this was after Sid Barrett left the band. Now, there's a story I've heard where um, they were in the studio and a guy just comes in and sits down and he says, oh, hey, let's hear the new album. And they didn't know who it was. They didn't recognize him. It was Sid Barrett himself um so he had schizophrenia he used to have uh like he would turn catatonic on stage and he you know needed help and he ended up leaving the band and that's when david gilmore really just took over most of the vocal duties um and the whole album is just it, it's a concept album and it's all a tribute to sid barrett basically which is kind of evident in some of the, the lyrics and stuff. Um, and that's what Shine On You Crazy Diamond is about, you know. They're just praising him, but also just, I think it also just points out the fact that he was, you know, had, had a mental illness. Um, so I'm just going to put everything back in here so I don't damage it. Yeah, so there's some great songs on here. You've got Shine On You Crazy Diamond, um, parts 1 through 5, and then parts 6 through 10. That At the beginning and end. So it's this really long, you know, 20, 25 minute piece that was split in half. Unfortunately, on some of the greatest hits albums, they'll just do parts 1 through 7, and that's it. I, I don't like when things get truncated like that. Um, then you've got... 
Welcome to the Machine, which is one of my favorite songs, and it's pr probably one of the reasons I just love synthesizers. I just really like how they sound and everything. And, th and these guys were wizards in the studio, let me tell you. So you had Welcome to the Machine was kind of a, a sad song, um, but just, you know, the lyrics kind of allude to Sid Barrett and stuff. Um, and then Wish You Were Here is the big radio single that everybody's heard, everybody knows how to play. You know, it has an interesting, just major minor chord progression and some interesting uh, lead guitar parts from David, of course. Um, the only song I don't always listen to is Have a Cigar. Um, that's an interesting song. And, you know, there's some good synth parts, some good lead guitar parts, but sometimes I skip that one. So... There you go. So the product itself, it sounds good. You know, it's it's a heavy vinyl, it's, so it's not gonna warp or anything, comes in this nice packaging. It was kind of expensive at the time. Um, and you know, it did come up, come with some extra stuff like a poster you can put up on the wall and some postcards. I don't know why there were postcards in there, but there you have it. One of my favorite albums, the first vinyl record I bought. Um, and then, yeah, at the time, a lot of these records were coming with um, codes to download an MP3 copy of the album. I think a lot of them have kind of stopped doing that, um, probably because of streaming services and whatnot. So, of course, you can get all the Pink Floyd albums and songs on, you know, Spotify, on Apple Music. They're all there. I mean, I think I own most of their albums on CD, and this is the only one I have on vinyl right now. Um, but I mean, this is arguably their best album. And, and like I say, there's songs on here that haven't been overplayed, like the way that Money has and some of the songs off of the wall. Um, I mean, Comfortably Numb is a great song, one of my favorite guitar solos, but I, I've heard that song at least a hundred times. I played in a band a long time ago and we just played covers and we played Young Lust and I hate Young Lust. I cannot listen to that song anymore, but... This is one of those albums I could listen to over and over again. Like when I was a teenager, I remember there was one night where I was just sitting in my room and I just put the album on repeat and just listened to it a couple times in a row. Um, just some really great stuff on this whole album. So there you go. So this is the first episode of The Vinyl Guy and each episode I'll just pick a different record and just talk about it for a little bit. Um, and, you know, and there's only five songs on here or arguably four songs so that's why i don't really have a lot to say about it other than you know you should definitely listen to it um actually one other thing is i had used one of their quotes as my yearbook quote in high school i thought it was pretty neat let's see if i can find it for you real quick um let's see so yeah my Yearbook quote was, and we'll bask in the shadow of yesterday's triumph and sail on the steel breeze. Come on, you boy child, you winner and loser. Come on, you minor for truth and delusion and shine. So that's what I was kind of thinking at graduation. I thought this was kind of a, a dark kind of take on it. Bask in the shadow of yesterday's triumph. You know, we succeeded at doing something and now we're adults and oh boy, you know, now you go out into the world and uh, you're not a kid anymore. You know, anyone who becomes an adult, you know, it's just adulthood kicks your ass. It really does. You know, all through high school, I was miserable and I didn't realize that after, it's all downhill from there. It really is. Um, so then, you know, welcome to the machine. To me, that kind of just, just, yeah, there's also the, the, the concept of getting into a job, you know, becoming part of the society machine and working and earning money and paying taxes and paying your bills and you know what did you dream it's all right we told you what to dream you know so their lyrics weren't always profound but i think they were always relatable yeah and then have a cigar is about becoming successful and just the, the excess of being a rock star you know Did you exchange a walk-on part in the war for a lead role in a cage? I thought that was an interesting line, too. So, 
there you have it. All right, so thanks for tuning in, and uh, be on the lookout for more episodes. All right, see you.